everyone it is your bro winster and i am back at it again with another video we are in that sweet spot for about three to four months since the last ban list that we got from konami so i think it is a perfect time to be talking about some of the ban list predictions and what i think is going to get hit in this up and coming one before we get into today's discussion please be sure to hit that subscribe button i would really really appreciate it we're getting ever so close to hitting 2,000 subscribers and it's all thanks to you so a huge thank you for always supporting me and while you're there please be sure to hit that notification bell stay up to date with all the content that drops on this channel do not be afraid to open that description box guys hit up all those other platforms discord TikTok, Twitch, Twitter. Be sure to follow me on those platforms as well. Let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our semi-limited list first, and we got three cards, one of which is gonna be Fenrir. Fenrir is an extremely powerful card. Specials it summon, special summons itself for absolutely free, just as long as you control no monsters. And on top of that, it has a very unique effect where it can search itself, which is very unique in my opinion. And then on top of that, it has great disruption on a resolution of your opponent activating a monster effect. You could activate Castira Fenrir and banish one face up card on the field, banish it face down, which is absolutely insane. And if that's not enough, when attacking, it could banish a face up card on the field and then still be able to attack, which is absolutely insane. Fenrir has dodged a couple of ban lists since its release and a lot of players there was a time where a lot of players were asking for this card's ban. I don't think it should be banned. It's a very powerful card and it could be splashing a lot of decks. And there was a time where there wasn't a deck that wasn't playing this card. If paint could be a two, I do think that Fenrir should be a two. It, it almost is the exact same card. Uh, it just special summons for free, which is insane. So I do think that this card is perfectly fine to go at two. Um, it would hurt it just a little bit, right? It's not going to be as consistent, but it's still going to be a pretty strong card in my personal opinion. And because of that, I do think that it's okay to be at two. The next card I wanted to talk about was Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. This card is very, very powerful, especially in the current format with F Snake Eyes being the best deck in the format. I think this is a perfect card for them to hit. Reason being is because it's going to hurt the consistency. It wouldn't flat out just stop the deck in its tracks. It just hurt the consistency a lot. This is just less copies of DS Bellstar that you're going to be placing in your deck. And in terms, original sinful spoil. So uh, I do think by hitting this, they are going to hit that strategy a little bit in terms of consistency. They're not going to have easy access, original sinful spoils. And on top of that, this card does offer a little bit more utility because it gives you an extra draw. Um, so I do think that even in that scenario, it'll lower a lot of the consistency that the deck could actually have. So the last card that I wanted to talk about on my personal semi-limited list is the Abel Star. Diabelle Star are just more copies of Wanted realistically because Wanted searches Diabelle, Diabelle searches Original Sinful Spoils. You guys know the rest of the line. You start popping off with Original Sinful Spoil. So by hitting this and Original Sinful Spoils, it's going to hurt the consistency uh, the same way that Wanted would. Um, and on top of that, Wanted and Diabelle Star are older cards. Uh, I don't think that Konami in their right mind is going to hit anything of the newer set. Uh, like Promethean Princess, Poplar, those cards are too new for them to hit. And on top of that, they're having support. So that's why I think that flat out that it's perfect to hit the Wanted or the Diabell Star cards to two because the new support is still going to come out. And Konami wants us to buy that set. So why hit it where you cannot play the deck? Hit it to a point where it hurts the consistency in some way and you at least are listening to the community. But that's wishful thinking. On to the limited list. And there are only two cards on my lim limited list and one of which is Snake Eye Ash. This card is immensely powerful in the Snake Eye strategy. Searches out any level one fire. So your usual target is gonna be Poplar. Uh, in the situations where this card is special summon, you can get Ponyx, right? So if you're playing a Snake Eye Fire King's deck, this card starts branching into other things. On top of that, you send two face of cards and then special summon any Snake Eye monster. Absolutely insane. Um, but I do think by hitting this card at two is gonna hit its consistency so much. Uh, maybe to a point where it's almost unplayable, but the deck has multiple ways of getting into Snake Eye Ash. 
just playing more copies of original sinful spoil you're still gonna have two wanted and two diabelle star i think it's okay to hit snake eye ash to one because it's still so powerful and i think that's the area that snake eye is just so strong its consistency is amazing being able to play multiple through multiple hand traps maybe not the more impactful ones like nibiru and roll but being able to play through imperm being able to play through ash effect failure any normal hand trap you name it this deck could play through it so i think Hitting this card to one is perfectly fine because you'll just play more copies of the other cards to still get into this. Um, but having this as a one card starter is just absolutely insane. And because it's still a relatively older card than Phantom Nightmare, Age of Overlord cards I think are more likely to get hit on this up and coming ban list than cards from that set. So I do think this it does make sense to be hitting this card. The last card on my limited list is Snake Eyes Flame Burge. Flame Burge is such a powerful, powerful card in the Snake Eye strategy. Anytime sent to the grave automatically gets you two level ones from your graveyard non-targeting. You at least have to have the two because it needs to summon two, which is absolutely insane but this is only going to be really hurting the pure build the pure builds are really the only one that play two copies so all the other builds snake eye super heavy snake eye fire king snake eye they're going to be fine because they only ever play the one in some cases they play multiple copy if they like having this card uh, in situations where they at least want to summon it out again but this card is absolutely strong i think it's perfectly fine to have this card at two it is one of the older cards right considering age of overlord is not that old right age of overlord like i said previously is only the older set so i don't think they're gonna hit anything from the newer set but it would make sense because this by far is the most important card of the snake eyes strategy there are only two cards that i think are worth banning none of which have anything to do with the snake eyes strategy i think snake eyes is still too, very very brand new and i don't think there's any place to actually ban any of those cards not that they're incapable of getting banned because they are very very powerful they are very very strong i think it's just too soon then on top of that uh there's more support coming out for the dia bell star stuff or for the snake eye stuff so uh, again even more reason why they're not gonna like ban poplar or ban princess or anything it's just it's just too soon and they want us to buy that merchandise but one of the cards that i wanted to talk about is dimensional shifter i think dimensional shifter is such a powerful card it's been running rampant for years now since 2019 i remember when back when that 10 first dropped because i was interested in Yu-Gi-Oh at the time but back when it first dropped i remember everyone saying this card is just absolutely trash now look at it right such a powerful card cashier is running it Flown Dereese is running it. Any deck that could run this card and not be affected is considered top tier because this card is that strong. It messes with any deck out right now that is considered meta uh, that cannot run it, right? Because a lot of decks want their graveyard. Um, so this card is perfectly fine, in my opinion, to get hit because this not just stops those top tier meta decks, it stops any deck, right, that needs their graveyard. And that's countless decks, right? Like off the top, you got Snake Guy, you got Tier Limit, you got Branded. I do think that this card is okay to get banned. I think it's a very toxic card. Um, and again, don't hate the player, hate the game. That's why I think it's perfectly fine to ban this card because this card, in my personal opinion, is just too strong. Shuts down a portion of the game, right? If cards activate that they need, they're a graveyard. Uh, this card just shuts it down. The last card on my ban list is going to be Albion, the Sanctifier Dragon. This card is absolutely insane. Now, if we look back on a couple of ban lists, right? Uh, the real only time that Branded ever got hit in the TCG is Branded Expulsion, which did Albion effect. Uh, and special summon two monsters, one to your side and one to your opponent's side, uh, if those monsters were banished or, and or in the graveyard, but it needed to summon both. So uh, what players were doing were summoning some broken cards to their side of the field or to their opponent's side of the field with Gimmick Puppet and just locking our opponent out uh, for the turn uh, and not being able to summon any other cards other than Gimmick 
uh, puppet cards, which is absolutely insane. One could say that the problem is those targets, right? Like Jowen, uh, Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, uh, Raw's Disciple, right? Anything along those lines. Those cards are extremely powerful. But what Konami did is take the correct step and ban what was enabling those cards. And that was Branded Expulsion. And I'll be on the Sanctifier Dragon is just a monster version of Branded Expulsion. Yes, it has a little bit more limited ways to summon in the monster because it could only summon from the graveyard where Expulsion could do Banished and or Graveyard, but it needs to summon both. Uh, but so does Albion, but Albion can only summon from the graveyard. Uh, but I think Konami did phenomenally well in stopping that card. So I think as much as I hate to admit and how much of a branded stand I am, I think hitting Albion is the right target. Yes, we could just ban Gimmick Puppet, but another target is going to come up and prevent our opponent from summoning uh, or uh, being able to play the game. Get rid of the enabler rather than the target. Okay, guys, so that is going to be it for today's video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of my banless predictions. Do you guys think that Konami is going to heed my warning? Do you guys like my banless prediction? Do you guys like my hit cards? Let me know in the comment section below, guys. I would love to get your guys' feedback or let me know of your banless predictions. What do you think should or is going to get hit? Let me know in the comment section. But that's going to be it for me today, guys. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to turn on the notification bell. I will check you guys out later. Peace out.